All right, Israel today launching new strikes in southern Lebanon as Hezbollah vows revenge for those pager and walkie-talkie attacks. All of this as the U.N. General Assembly backs a resolution demanding Israel and its unlawful presence in Gaza and the West Bank. Joining us now to react is Israeli Ambassador to the United Nations, Danny Danan. Ambassador, always good to talk with you. Thank you for having me, Sandra. First off, your reaction to these new strikes in southern Lebanon and where this is going next. You know, we are not commenting on what happened in Lebanon in the last few days, but I will tell you that we will bring back the Israelis who live in northern part of Israel to their homes. Mm. For 11 months, they are displaced. So we are trying diplomacy. We are very patient, but there is a point that we have to say enough is enough. So either diplomatically we will push Hezbollah off the fence, or we will use our abilities, and we have abilities, our might, in order to push them from the fence. On the latest round of these attacks, now walkie-talkies, pagers first. This is the second wave of these attacks. Hezbollah vowing revenge. Where does all this go, and what is this new warfare? Well, you know, one should ask himself why we have a war with Hezbollah. Mm. It all started on uh, October 8th. After October 7th, Hezbollah decided to show sympathy to the attack of Hamas and to attack Israel. Mm. And since that day, they launched thousands of rockets and missiles into Israel, uh, and we are pushing back, but we haven't used all of our capabilities. But I think now when we're getting to a year from October 7, the Israeli public, the Israeli government decided to add another goal to the goals of the war, is to allow the people of the North to go back home. And in order to do that, we will have to mobilize our strengths, stretch our muscles, and push them back. We heard that from Israel officials overnight, that we are not using the fullest of our capabilities, that we have more to come. Uh, what is the decision-making process, knowing how things are escalating right now? How do you deploy those resources, and in what time? Well, we still hope that there will be a diplomatic uh, solution. Mm -hmm. There are a few negotiators trying to negotiate a deal, and they're telling both sides, even if you go to a war, at the end of the war, you're going to have to come, sit down, and come to some kind of an agreement. So let's do it before uh, the war. But, you know, when you look at uh, Hezbollah, you understand they are not deciding. Iran is behind uh, the proxies. The Ayatollahs are actually sending the proxies to fight with us. So it's not for them to decide. And I'm not optimistic about that. Because I think, unfortunately, uh, we will have no choice but to push them with our might from the border. Yeah, incredible strength on the part of the Israeli people and on the part of the Israeli military. Meanwhile, an Israeli man was arrested over an alleged Iranian plot to assassinate uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Obviously, this is amid all of these growing tensions, Ambassador. How big of a threat is, is this, and, and what is the reaction on the part of Israel to this? So the Iranians are, are meddling not only in the U.S. politics, but also in Israel. They are recruiting people online. They offer them a lot of money uh, in order to create chaos uh, in Israel. Unfortunately, we cannot go into the detail, but this individual got involved. He actually flew to Tehran. I don't know if he was paid or not, but they are doing a lot of damages, trying to infiltrate both here in the U.S. and in Israel with their money. We have to push back against Iran. You know, now we are pushing back the proxies, Hamas, Hezbollah. But at the end of the day, we, the democracies of the world, will have to go and deal with the main threat, which is Iran. I'm throwing one other thing into the mix here amid these escalating tensions is the Iranian uh, meddling in U.S. elections in the United States response to it. So what do you how would you generalize the United States response right now? Obviously, as we work our way to a presidential election just weeks away now and how we are responding to the growing threat that is Iran. Well, I'm sure you have the capabilities, but you have to be aware that the Iranians ignore protocol, they ignore diplomacy. They will be more involved than you can imagine. We see it in Israel. We have seen cyber attacks in the last 24 hours. They were actually texting millions of Israelis false messages, trying to scare them about attack coming from Lebanon. They will do the same here. You have to be prepared for that. Um, what we're hearing coming uh, out of the United Nations, I know that you have a message to our viewers about what, what we are hearing there, uh, in the unlawful presence that is Israel in Gaza. Your response? Well, it's a circus. Yesterday they passed a resolution condemning Israel, trying to isolate us. Next week there will be a lot of traffic because all the leaders will come to New York City, but there will be no resolution condemning Hamas. And that bothers us. You know, after what we experienced on October 7, the UN is not capable of condemning the atrocities. They are not capable of actually saying Hamas. Mm. Uh, but what they did yesterday was condemning Israel. It's shameful. 
Ambassador. We always appreciate when you can join us. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Okay, good to see you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.